All right, hey, what's up, everybody? It's MC Stein. I want to talk a little bit today just about music publishing. There's a lot of questions and concerns about what exactly you do to retain your publishing rights or how do you go about putting out music and getting all the royalties that are yours. So this is just going to be a short video updating some of the things that I've said in the past and I hope it's helpful for you. Okay, so just getting straight into it. Your music can be published in a lot of different ways, whether your track is available in MP3, sold on vinyl, in a record store, streamed digitally on Spotify, iTunes, whatever. If it's featured on a television soundtrack or played by a DJ, um, at a festival, all these things can be monetized through your publishing rights. So if you're planning to release your records, you don't just need to think about distribution and contracts. You also need to get all these things in line in related to your publishing. Okay, so this is, this is essentially just about your ownership and what is called a copyright. And you hold these over the music that you write um, rather than the recorded track themselves. And you can generate income for yourself as a musician through ownership of the copyright. Generally, these rights will be dealt with by a music publisher who basically just ensures that you receive payment for the music that you've written and when it's, in, when it's performed in public online or on the radio or copied for distribution. This is generated through performing and mechanical rights. And this is distinct from income generated from the master rights which you might sign over to, let's say, a record label. Okay, so there's a difference between owning the publishing, the copyright, versus owning control over the actual recording of the song. Those are, those are two different things. And if you're a solo artist that's creating and recording your own music, then you, you do own both. Okay. Music publishing is more important than ever because of the, the digital nature of the music industry, the streaming era, okay? And this brings a lot of misunderstanding. Even if you have experience, or especially if you have an experience with the previous way uh, things were done. All right. So what do you need to know? You need to know about your copyrights. Um, basically, managing your copyrights. Simply put, a music copyright is um, basically intellectual property. You'll, you'll sometimes hear this being referred to as IP. Uh, if you think up of an idea, if you write something down, it technically belongs to you if you come up with it. It's similar to a, uh, a patent or a trademark, which is granted to your music once it's either been recorded or written down. So the copyright on your track covers the right to reproduce, distribute, perform, uh, as well as create other works that derive from this, like a remix or a cover, for example. Okay, so how do you get paid from this? Um, there's a number of ways that you generate income from the copyright you hold on your music. And the most traditional form is called a mechanical royalty. Uh, it's basically just revenue that comes from the reproduction of music, physical formats like vinyl, CDs, as well as digital formats. Um, like mp3s or waves. Now another category is the performance royalties and this is income that's generated from your music when it's performed in public. 
radio, like we said, television, digital streaming. This category includes plays and performances in live venues. Another way your music can be published can be under a synchronization license. Uh, some people call this a sync or sync license. This just means that your track is used as a soundtrack for something like um, an advertisement, TV show, movie, video game, YouTube content, um, or anything else. An example of this was is like if when you're playing NBA Live and uh, or NBA 2K and and you're selecting your team, the music that's playing in the background, or back in the day, like Tony Hawk, or these video games that have songs that are playing during certain moments in the game, those require a sync license. The, the game require, is, is required to get a sync license for that artist's music, and that generates income. All right, so let's talk quickly about managing your copyright on your tracks, on your music. The most important step for managing your music copyright is to register with a performance right organization, a PRO as its, as its abbreviation or it's um, what it's called by a PRO. And this is basically just a body that's going to help ensure that you're paid for the use of your music, okay? Like the name implies, performance right organization. It's collecting royalties on your behalf when something that you make, your music is played on the radio or by a DJ in a club or featured on a TV advert or anything like that. The job of the PRO is to make sure that you're paid royalties for the music that's performed. Remember that, P, performed. And each country... Each country has its own PRO, and all of them are linked internationally, and they cooperate with each other and have um, an arrangement that's reciprocal. So in the, in the United States, for example, CSAC, ASCAP, BMI, GMR, those are, those are the, the main ones, the main four organizations, major organizations. Now, when it comes to managing the copyright on your tracks, you have two options. Uh, you can either join a PRO yourself and take responsibility for managing your own copyrights, or you can instead secure the services of a professional publishing house to manage it for you and let them join the PRO on your behalf. And this is what happens with, say, using CD Baby or... CD Baby Pro or DistroKid and other, well, let me take that back. No, that, it, it, that's not what happens with, with DistroKid. Um, but if you go through CD Baby Pro, it will do that on your behalf. It will join a, a PRO for you and assign one to you. Now, what you need to look out for is... Um, There's some problems that that you might face as a recording artist. Um, you need to you need to make sure you join a PRO organization to earn your royalties. Um, but also work with a good publisher. A publisher is going to help you maximize your revenue. And by publisher, I mean like a CD Baby, TuneCore, uh, DistroKid, and all of, all of those have their pros and cons that go along with those. Some of those I've discussed in other videos. I personally use CD Baby Pro for my album, albums that I drop, and I usually, I sometimes put singles on DistroKid. Uh, really, really briefly, CD Baby Pro collects mechanical royalties, but they also collect your royalties for publishing. Um, if you go through DistroKid, you have to have sign up with another company called SongTrust to collect other royalties besides your streaming royalties. The, the SongTrust, 
that you need to sign up with if you go with DistroKid is the company that CD Baby uses when you get CD Baby Pro. Um, but watch out, watch out when you go through these when you go through these publishers because, like for example, DistroKid that says they advertise twenty dollars a year, but that's only for the base kind of base account. If you want to get certain, if you want to get other things that that might be important to you when you when you go through a publisher, you're gonna have to pay extra. So most people don't just use the twenty dollar kind of version of DistroKid. On the other hand, you might not want to pay seventy dollars for CD Baby Pro when you put an album out. That's that's here nor there. You, that's something that you need to decide. There's pros and cons either way, and there's there's other resources that you can that you can look at to uh, make that decision. Another piece of advice, and this is more of a warning. You hear a lot about people. You hear, hear a lot about people owning their masters. This discussion, signing to a label, whatnot. Um, first of all, as far as signing to a label is concerned, people want to know, do I need a manager? Do I need to sign to a label? And here's the thing. If you're not popping already, no label is going to be interested in you. The work that it takes to get signed or to get, to get the attention of a label is you establishing your fan base getting your streams up, not fake streams, not fake likes on social media, real engagement, real fan base, a, a, a source or a pool of income for you and your music. That's what a label is interested in nowadays. If you don't have that, then you don't need a manager. You don't need a label. So... Let's say you start developing a fan base and you get a little buzz maybe in your city or you get some people streaming your music. You get a lot of reactions or engagements on your social media, people that are engaging with your content. And then some A&R guy contacts you for some label because they they're only going to start showing up when they smell money. Be careful of that because... What the, the only thing that a label can do for you is scale up what's happening already. The days are gone where you're just some freestyler posting stuff on social media and some guy plucks you out of obscurity and turns you into a megastar. The, the labels are strapped for cash and a &Rs are desperate to not lose their job. What they want is sure things. They want what they want is someone with a fan base. So just be careful because a lot of people that are approached by a label are tricked into thinking that they're all of a sudden going to be like propelled into riches and fame and whatnot. And that that may happen. But really what the label is going to want to do is they're going to want to take your rights away. Okay? They're going to take your rights away from your catalog or they're going to offer you some kind of a deal up front to get that music in their hands, to get the ownership, the copyright, the, the publishing of that music in their hands. Now, why would you give it to them? Well, some people get an advancement. And, and this, is, this is where the problem comes is because a lot of people that, that are... In the music industry, um, let's say they get into it to make money, and that's all they care about. They get offered a check that may last them one year's wage. You know, maybe it's thirty thousand dollars, maybe it's a hundred thousand dollars. It seems like a ton of money, and it is. But they sign. Let's say they sign away their rights to the music, and in, in exchange for this advance that they're going to have to pay back out of their sales, but all of a sudden they don't have any residual income from the music they've made. The, the industry has basically bought, bought a product off of the artist 
and is selling the product and making money off the product while the artist is basically just left with the advance. This is, this is just problematic because a lot of people have been left with a small advance and they think that they're going to be made famous and made, made popular by this, this, this label that cares about them and wants them to succeed. And really they, want, they do want them to succeed, but the second that they don't, and this happens to most artists that get signed. Most artists that get signed get dropped because they don't do well. Because the, the label moves on and they go on to someone else. They want to sign someone else. But in the meantime, they're retaining these rights to the artist's music. So be very, very careful about what you think or what you made. If you're, if you're blessed enough to be in the position to choose whether you want to go with a label or not, know that you have the leverage, that you have the power because labels are only going to be coming to you if you have, if you have some, some buzz, or if you have some people um, coming after you. Okay. So when it comes to getting your music synced, or put in advertisements, or used by other people. Remember, you have to retain your rights, your publishing, to as a songwriter, as a composer, as a as as an artist. You have the rights to those things once you put pen to paper, once you once you compose it, once you make it, once you make it real. So on the back end, make sure that you're copywriting your music. Yes, legally, things become copywritten once you write them down. But you can actually go to copyright.org and, and put it down in pen and paper, in stone, to where it says, this is what I wrote, this is what I recorded, so if you ever have to go to a court case or you have to sue somebody for stealing your music, you can go and point back to that copyright and say, see, I registered it. Make sure that the, there's no reason to not sign up for a PRO. Um, it's the simplest thing to do. So you have to sign up with a performance riot organization and then your publisher is what puts your music on the platforms like Spotify, iTunes, whatever. This is going to be your TuneCore, CD Baby, DistroKid, all that stuff. All those, all those, all those groups that offer that service. Now, depending on what service you go with and what type of product you buy from them, is going to determine what kind of royalties they collect. Now they're all get all of those all of those groups like TuneCore, CD Baby, DistroKid, whatever. They're going to collect you're, they're going to collect your streaming money, your mechanical royalties. But what they're not going to do, unless you indicate it or spend more money on through them or through another company like SongTrust, is collect your publishing rights. So make sure that you get both of those the performance streaming and the publishing okay all three streams need to be covered in order to protect you but again let me say this none of none of this really matters unless you have a following i uh, i'm a perfect example of this i I have a fairly small following. Um, I have less than a thousand streams on most of my songs. And I've maybe generated three dollars in the last year. Okay? So what I'm saying to you is put it into perspective. A lot of you want to know and, and get educated on on the business side of of all of this and that's great but unless unless you're popping unless you're you're getting some buzz it's kind of insignificant it kind of doesn't really matter um, so this is off topic but I just want to encourage you focus on what it takes to get you in that position 
Focus on what it takes to get a fan base, reaching out to people, doing shows, etc. Finding a manager and, and, and finding a label are, are things that are way down the road if you're just starting out like me. So I hope this is encouraging for you. I hope this clarifies some things that maybe you're wondering about. And I hope you subscribe and, and, and check out some of my other content. All right. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you soon.